Welcome back to Endarasa. We proceed from where we stopped. In our previous class, we were looking at the capital asset pricing model, or rather CAPEM. Today, I want us to proceed on with another area known as the arbitrage pricing model, or rather APM. And you write below that, you write below that, CAPEM is a single factor model. CAPEM is a single factor model since it determines the return of a security, since it determines the return of a security using 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 SML as follows. Using SML as follows. SML as follows. ERJ is given by risk-free rate plus beta of J plus beta of J multiplied by expected return of the market minus risk-free rate. Then you write below that. You write below that. APM APM was developed, APM, that is asset pricing model, arbitrage pricing model, was developed to deal with a scenario where there is more than one, where there is more than one factor, where there is more than one factor, i.e., uh, it is a multi-factor model. It is a multi-factor model. It is a multi-factor model whereby expected return of J is given by risk-free rate of return, RF, plus beta of A into brackets expected return of expected return of the market, expected return of market A minus risk-free rate. Plus, plus, beta of B, beta of B, into bracket, expected return of B minus risk-free rate, risk-free rate, all the way up to beta of N, into brackets, into brackets, into brackets, ERN, ERN, minus risk-free rate. So, APM deals with a scenario whereby there are more than one factor. There is more than one factor. That's why we call it a multi-factor model. Then below that you write, you write below that, differences between APM and CAPEM. Differences between ABM APM and CAPEM. You'll have on one side APM and on the other side you'll have CAPEM. You'll have APM and on the other side you'll have CAPEM. You'll have APM on one side and CAPEM on the other side. Let's start. On the side of APM it is a multi-factor model. On the side of APM, it is a multi-factor model. While on the side of CAPEM, it is a single-factor model. While on the side of CAPEM, it is a single-factor model. Number two, on the side of APM, there is no need of a well-diversified market portfolio. On the side of APM, there is no need of a well-diversified market portfolio. There is no need of a well-diversified market portfolio. 
while on the side of CAPEM, there is need of a well diversified market portfolio. There is need for a well diversified market portfolio, which influences the returns of the securities, which influences the returns of the securities. Number three, On the side of APM, it doesn't use in different curves. It doesn't use in different curves to measure utility. On the side of APM, it does not use in different curves to measure utilities. On the side of CAPM, uses in different curves to measure utility. On the side of CAPM, it uses in different curves to measure utility. On the side of APM, it does not assume a normal distribution of returns of securities. It doesn't assume a normal distribution of returns of securities. It doesn't use or it doesn't assume normal distribution of returns of securities. While on the side of CAPEM, it assumes normal distribution. On the side of CAPEM, it assumes normal distribution of returns of utility, of, of security, sorry. It assumes normal distribution of returns of securities. Then below that you write weaknesses of APM weaknesses of APM weaknesses of APM then you write number one the model involves a complex statistical analysis. The model involves a complex statistical analysis which is sometimes hard to interpret. Which is sometimes hard to interpret. Which is sometimes hard to interpret. Number two. The model does not clearly identify. The model does not clearly identify the systematic economic factors. Does not clearly identify the systematic economic factors. The systematic economic factors which should be included in the model. The systematic economic factors which should be included in the model. Number next. An arbitrage portfolio with no capital investments, an arbitrage portfolio with no capital investments, with no capital investments, and which generates positive returns, and which generates positive returns, cannot be achieved in the real world situation. Cannot be achieved in a real world situation. Then below that, to conclude on APM, let's do a past paper question from November 2019. Let's go through a past paper question from November 2019. Question number 3C. November 2019. Question number 3C. November 2019. Question 
Green Sea. November 2019, question 3C. Job Ocheng, an investor, believes that there are three important factors that determine the expected return of a particular common stock. Job uses the following factor betas and factor risk premiums. The factor number one, two, three, factor beta, factor risk premium. The expected return, they are required to get, you're given the risk free rate of return to be 5%. And you are required to get the expected return of the stock using APT model and explain two differences between CAPM and APM. So as far as the differences are concerned, we have given actually more than two. Therefore, let's concentrate with the first part of the question where you are supposed to get the expected return of the stock using APM. So you write expected return expected return would be risk free rate of return which is 5% plus beta factor of factor 1 of uh, factor 1 which is uh, 0 0.7 so uh, risk premium is 2.5 times 0 0.7 plus Risk premium of 5 times factor beta 1.2 plus 6.0 times factor beta negative 0 0.1. Once we work it out, once we work it out, once we work it out, we are going to get, let's use the calculator. Once we use the calculator, it will be 5 plus 2.5 times 0 0.7 plus 5 times 1.2 plus 6 times, okay, before that we get that, minus 0 0.6 I'm getting the expected return using APT to be 12.15% so basically that is how you apply the arbitrage pricing model on theory to determine the required rate of return of various Portfolios. Therefore, the only difference between uh, between uh, uh, CAPM, uh, the major difference when it comes to computation is that APM is multi-factor, uh, while CAPM is a single-factor model. You can see we are using three factors in this particular question, and that gives the major difference between CAPM and APM, though there are other differences as we have stated them in our notes. So that is how you go about a bit of pricing theory or model. And uh, until we meet next time, have a nice time. Thank you.